Good morning and welcome to The Law Show. Bob Kerrigan with you this morning, and we're talking about, we continue to talk about the various schemes and scams that defraud our senior citizens. We've talked about uh, aspects of Medicare and all these supplements and advantage plans, et cetera, that are pitched at the time when you can sign up uh, and supposed advantages of those. And then we've talked about the reality of giving up Medicare for a substitute insurance company that you really have no idea what they're going to insure and not insure. So I have taken a position, and I think it's not the position necessarily of obviously of the station or uh, advertisers or anybody else, but my opinion is that uh, there's um, real fraud going on, um, convincing people to give up something um, that they shouldn't give up, and in that case, Medicare itself. Now, we've also talked about uh, various fundraising schemes that people come up with, and they call and say, for example, do you support our veterans? Well, Yes, I mean, people would be unusual for a person to say, no, they don't. And so they engage you in conversation. A lot of these are start with robocalls, and then if you answer a couple of questions and you actually talk to a live person, they get paid based upon selling you whatever they're selling you. We talked about the uh, percentage of, of your contribution that you make to the various organizations and how much of that goes to the fundraiser the people raising money for the organization. The organization might say, well, you know, hey, we don't care. If we get some of the money, we're better off because we didn't have that money. So they really kind of look the other way and the fundraisers decide, well, we're going to get in this and we're going to appeal to people's uh, fear. These advertisements and these proposals uh, across the board have a common denominator and it's fear. So today I'm going to talk about the fear that the elderly have f for dementia, for the development of dementia, and the multi-billion dollar market of snake oil that's being sold to people ostensibly to uh, enhance their memory um, when there's no scientific basis for it. So let me start, and I'm going to go through a lot of this. Today's program will be focused on Prevagen, you see all these advertisements for Prevagen um, claiming that, well, they're, they're cleverly done because they don't just out and out say, by golly, we can prove it. Your memory is going to improve. I mean, everybody would just be flocking to stock up on this stuff. Um, but that's not the case. They, these are things like people have anecdotally said, well, you know, I've been taking Prevagen for five or six years and I find my attention is much more focused on whatever. Well, you don't know if these people are loading up with every other, other kind of supplement that's out there. By the way, the Federal Drug Administration doesn't regulate these supplements. And invariably, they have disclaimers somewhere in their advertisements or whatever that these supplements uh, are, are not guaranteed to do anything. But people take them. Now, for example, if you're if you're deficient in vitamin D and you take a vitamin D supplement and your physician says that you should be to get your vitamin D level, that, that's entirely different from these general health food supplements. So let's talk about Prevagen. There was an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, a very prestigious journal, entitled The Rise of Pseudomedicine for Dementia and Brain Health. Well, out of that article, they conclude that there aren't any uh, benefits to any of these things that can be objectively and uh, established and proved. Let me talk a little bit about testing and what these terms mean, okay? So you've got a product that you say is really going to improve a person's memory, and you want to test it. Well, the gold standard of testing is what they call a double-blind test and here with a placebo. So here's how it works. You take a population of say 5,000 people and 2,500 randomly selected, that's what they call randomized testing, randomly selected, they get the placebo and the other 25 get the Prevagen, for example, or whatever the drug is that you're testing. 
the people administering it don't know which one they're giving. They don't know whether it's a placebo or whether it is uh, the drug itself, like Pre Prevagen, or the supplement like Prevagen. And the reason that's a superior method is that if you know which one it is, as a physician or whatever, you know, you might clue the person that's getting it that they're getting the real deal or they're getting a placebo. So when you have a double blind test, the people giving it don't know and the people receiving it don't know. And then they're tested later to see um, how that works. Now, there's some stratifications of randomized testing, breaking it down, say, to people over 50, people under 50, things like that. But that's generally how it works in randomized testing. So first of all, Prevagen did a study themselves a legitimate uh, randomized double blind test and it proved that their supplement didn't help anybody. It didn't, it didn't do what they said it was going to do. They didn't, those people that got it didn't perform any better than the people with the placebo. This article in the American Medical Association, the Journal of American Medical Association, was written by three prominent neurologists and dementia researchers at the University of California, San Diego. And they discussed this $3.2 billion dollars that is um, made by selling these to, to people. Um, and the reason there's a big market for it now is the increase, uh, we, we live longer now, and that there is a greater incidence of Alzheimer's disease. Anybody that has dealt with a relative with Alzheimer's disease knows how tragic it is and how tough it is and how debilitating it is for not only the person that has it, but for the family dealing with it. Um, so enter this outfit called Quincy Bioscience, and they're the maker of Prevagen, P-R-E-V-A-G-E-N. And they use um, a claim that they have uh, scientific backing for what they claim Prevagen does. Well, the fact is they don't have scientific backing for it. Um, and it says in this article that, it, that they lack essential features. Remember, I talked about the randomized uh, double blind testing of sufficient participant characterization, treatment randomization, and fail to include limitations. And these are published in what they call bad papers. Now, when they talk about a peer reviewed article before it's published in one of these prestigious journals, other physicians have to look at it that are knowledgeable in the field. They have to test the premise and they have to test the results and they have to verify that in their view, this is a valid scientific paper. No, this Quincy Bioscience didn't have that. They didn't have it at all. They cite to something called the Madison Memory Study. It's a study sponsored by them, performed by an employee of this company, Quincy Bioscience, and published in-house, meaning they publish it themselves, not publish it in a reputable journal or whatever. And in the world of real science, this type of study is ignored. I'm writing, uh, reading from an article uh, from MedPage today. I've talked about MedPage today. I think it's excellent. The marketing, uh, this article goes on, so the marketing for Prevagen is a clear-cut fraud from the label on the bottle to the ads airing across the country, said New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. <clears throat> the marketers of uh, Prevagen have preyed on the fears of older consumers experiencing age-related memory loss, said Jessica Rich, director of the Federal Trade Commission's Bureau of Consumer Protection. But one critical thing these marketers forgot is that their claims need to be backed up by real scientific evidence. And it's not. So what happened? Well, there's a lawsuit that was filed. You know, enter the lawyers. What we do for a living. Okay, and there's fraud. Lawyers like to think that they're protecting society from it. I think they are in many cases. Um, this was filed by the Federal Trade Commission and the people of the state of New York, um, and it was against Quincy Bioscience Holding Company, that company that I told you about that, that makes Prevagen. Okay? So they filed this lawsuit. Let me just tell you some of the things they said in the lawsuit, and then I'll tell you what happened to the lawsuit. Okay? Um, that Quincy actually conducted a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study that contradicted their representations. The study showed no statistically significant improvement. So Quincy Biosense did, did the study correctly, but, but it showed it didn't make any difference. The placebo people 
had just as good a memory or just as big a memory loss as the people who took the drug, okay? The FTC has stated a plausible claim that Quincy's representations about Prevagen are contraindicated by the results of Quincy's clinical trial and are thus materially deceptive. Okay, so that was the lawsuit that was filed by the Federal Trade Commission. I'll tell you about that. Um, so what happened to that lawsuit? It says that the FCT, by the way, the FCT, uh, FTC alleges that Quincy's claim that the active ingredients in Prevagen, apoquarin, enters the human brain to supplement um, the proteins that are lost during the natural process of aging. That claim, this lawsuit says false. Well, where does this stuff come from? Okay, this is really funny. All right, if there is anything funny to all of this, it is that this stuff comes from a jellyfish's brain, and it's supposed to be uh, beneficial to your brain. Uh, one of the problems is that jellyfish don't have a brain, okay, but it's supposed to be beneficial. <laughs> As this one, I would just read some of the comments from the article uh, that are made by just various people. And jellyfish have no brains, um, only neural networks. This is really a good one. Sea turtles must have great memories. They overload on jellyfish. One of the fewer that feed that few of the few who enjoy fellowship, <laughs> jellyfish as cuisine. Okay, so I'm just reading you some of the comments to the article, and I'll make a, another comment in a minute here. Um, old time medicine shows go on and on. I can't figure out why jellyfish's extract will be good for anyone's brain. Jellyfish don't have brains. Man, several people knew that, which I actually didn't know. I should have known that, I suppose, from biology or something. Some course I failed to <laughs> grasp that. And I, it's really helped my swimming, but I can't seem to remember how to get out of the pool. Okay. In order to get these products, they require you to sign up for automatic billing. All right. This stuff's like 30 to 50 bucks a month. And in, in, invariably, the elderly are buying this to try to prevent this onset of dementia. Pray, pray, and this summarizes it pretty good. Preying on the fears of an aging population. The common denominator we see over and over and over again. Preying on fears. Your identity is, is stolen every 31 seconds, according to the deceased Rush Limbaugh, when, as they were selling uh, some program that prevents your identity from being stolen. Your house is going to be broken into. Uh, your car is going to break down. If your car breaks down, you don't have insurance. You better get that insurance right away. Well, the judge that heard this case kicked it out, kicked the FTC cases out, and that was appealed, and I read you a little bit from the appeal. So who is this judge? Louis L. Stanton. Lewis L. Stanton entered this order that dismissed the case, bounced it out of court. Judge Stanton is 93 years old and on senior status, and the federal court allows elderly judges like this to participate if they're deemed to have their mental health and, and able to make good decisions. And, and I suspect that was, but it was just interesting to me that uh, this case involved an elderly judge like this and the subject of uh, Prevagen was the subject of the lawsuit. Bob Kerrigan with you here on The Law Show. Thank you very much for watching us and for emailing and texting us. And stay tuned for more of The Law Show.